Chair. Robert McIntyre is the director of the Citizens for Tax Justice, has also testified on many occasions before this committee. Welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, today's the first day of Lent. It's an opportunity to take a resolution and maybe give up, not just till Easter, but maybe even longer, what has become a great deal of enthusiasm in the Congress among both parties for providing subsidies to American businesses and foreign businesses sometimes in programs that are administrated by Congress's favorite agency, loved beyond any other, the Internal Revenue Service. I don't know why you like it so much, but you do. You know, a quarter of a century ago, President Reagan took on these business subsidies that had grown into the tax code. Some of them he actually had put in there. But he took them on in 1986, and he passed a big tax reform bill that, among other things, uh, raised corporate tax payments by more than a third. And the money was used to help fund individual tax reductions. But the President Reagan wasn't afraid uh, to do that, to raise taxes on corporations in the sense of taking away subsidies that they didn't deserve. And he didn't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Uh, that may not be the current thinking here, but I'm going to try to talk you out of the current thinking. In our view, the, the, as you know, the lobbyists have been back. They've worked their magic, and the, the corporate and um, personal business side of the tax code is a mess again. We have three complaints. One about uh, what the current system d does to hurt us. These subsidies, $365 billion in this fiscal year alone for business uh, income, th tax subsidies for business income, both corporate and personal, they cost that much money. It would make a huge step towards deficit reduction if we could recover some or all of that. And we strongly disagree with, with uh, President Obama at the, on his idea that corporate tax reform should be revenue neutral. That would defeat one of the main points of reform, is, and that point is that we need to deal with our deficit over the long term. And, you know, if there's one thing the public likes in terms of deficit reduction, it is asking American corporations to pay their taxes again. They don't like Social Security cuts. They don't like Medicare cuts. They don't like cuts in any program they've actually ever heard of. But they do like uh, making American companies pay at least as much taxes as they are, which is not true now. Now, you get bonuses out of corporate tax reform done right because the current subsidies, as any economist will tell you, are designed to make companies do things that don't make any sense economically. That's the program. We want them to not invest in what has the highest rate of return or what the customers want to buy. We want them to do things that you very, very smart senators and the smart people over in the House of Representatives think are better. Sort of Soviet-style socialism, you could call it, if you were a mean person, not me. Uh, well, if you tell companies to do things that are uneconomical, mostly they won't because they're not where the money is. They, in fact, that's not what they lobby for. I mean, think about this for a minute. I'm uh, a steel company. I come in. Senator Conrad, I'd like a tax break to make aluminum. No. <laughs> I'm asking for a tax break to make steel, because that's what I do. It's what I will do. But if you want to pay me to do it, so much the better. So that's the good news about the tax break, is most of them are complete and utter useless waste. But sometimes they make a difference. We have a system where the aerospace industry pays 1% in taxes, and the retail industry pays 27%. And in between, the rates are all over the place, too. I mean, that has to have some effect in getting investors to move to one place or another, and that distorts behavior. Some effect. I'll tell you where the real effect is, though, the real worst effect, and that is our international system, which right now we pay our companies to either artificially shift their profits offshore or, in some cases, move things offshore and really do business offshore instead of here in the United States. We have tilted the playing field with tax breaks so that you can make more money after tax in China than you can in the United States, even if before tax you make the same thing. And that seems to me to be nuts. So very economically harmful. The third point that I worry about is that, as you have pointed out, Senator Conrad, uh, the disparity between taxes on capital income and taxes on wages has grown larger and larger. And 
If you look at what we could do about that, well, yeah, capital gains and dividends breaks are part of it. But most capital gains aren't ever taxed, and neither are most dividends. Uh, the one place we could do something about this inequality in tax, taxes and lack of progressivity compared to the olden days in the tax system is on the corporate side, where, these, where the income is earned. If we can get some taxes out of the capital income at the source, which is what the corporate income tax is supposed to do, because we all know that most dividends aren't taxed, most capital gains aren't, uh, then we would have a more progressive and a fairer tax system. And that would be a good thing, I think. You know, we can argue about whether it's good, but I think it's good. So in conclusion, you on this committee are going to play a major role in trying to design a plan to reduce the long-term budget deficits. And you don't want to do it what, in, to, in a way that endangers our very fragile economy, so you're going to do it gradually, I hope, and you're going to do it well, and you're going to make great choices. We urge you to make reduction or elimination of business tax subsidies your highest priority here, because doing so, you cannot just cut the deficit you, and, and therefore retain some important programs. You can make the economy more efficient, you can add jobs, and you can make America a better society. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre.